we are influencing people. We are influencing people at the highest levels now, chat. We're influencing physicists. We're influencing other very important people that are out there. We are setting narratives. We are making a difference. And here's Sabine Hassenfelder's uh, new book. Yeah, she's going to be the ZPE queen. She doesn't know it yet. She doesn't know it. She hasn't accepted her fate. She hasn't accepted her destiny. But one day she will, chat. So here it is. Sabine Hassenfelder explaining warp drives, chat. Explaining warp drives. Here we go. Einstein's theory of general relativity itself that allows certain types of travel faster than light. For one thing, it allows wormholes as shortcuts. You don't actually travel faster than light through the wormhole. However, you'll be faster than light that didn't go through the wormhole. Warp metrics exploit another peculiar feature of general relativity, which is that while you can't move in space-time faster than light, space-time itself can move faster than light. Physicists believe that this actually happened in the early universe that space expanded faster than light. So mathematically, you can make warp drives work. So far, however, we don't know how to create and maintain either wormholes or warp metrics, as these seem to require negative energy, which for the time being is all being used up on Twitter. All the negative energy is being used up on Twitter. Wow. Wow, man, Lulu hit my camera here, guys, trying to reestablish. All the negative energy is being used up on Twitter, but there it is. General relativity is what proves warp drives and wormholes are real. General relativity is what proves it to be real. Einstein was right about general relativity. He's the one that predicted gravitational waves. A gravitational wave must have a medium by which it's moving through. So we can think of space-time as a medium. We can think of space-time as a medium, and the gravitational waves are the ripples in that medium. And if there are ripples in that medium, we can use those ripples as propulsion. How? How do we do it? We squeeze the vacuum. And the most simple explanation is we produce a very condensed large amount of energy electromagnetic energy in a region of space time produce a large amount of electromagnetic energy in a region condensed region of space time now how do we do that so positive energy we use positive energy to pull it off two ways one laser beams laser beams so we use a very short condensed pulse of energy uh, pedo, petawatt laser, attosecond lasers. Attosecond lasers are probably the, the bee's knees, which won the Nobel Prize just a few years ago, attosecond lasers. So we use attosecond lasers are one way to produce a gravitational ripple. You would pulse it so that you would cause the amount of energy to go up and then down again. And this was going to produce your gravitational wave. So you pulse this energy and you use that. Yeah, femtosecond, thank you. Femtosecond and attosecond lasers are the ones that we were looking for. And we can use that to make a wave that we're just going to ride on that wave. I'm going to ride that wave. So that would be our warp drive, warp metric. The other way we do it to make our wormhole. So we're basically, we're taking the zero point energy and we're interacting with the zero point energy. The other way to do it, if we need to go like this, we need a wormhole. We need to really bend space time then we need a huge amount of electromagnetic energy, a very big amount of electromagnetic energy. And in order to do that, we need a nuclear bomb. We need a thermonuclear bomb to pull that energy off. And, and a normal thermonuclear energy bomb won't, won't be good enough. Why? Because a lot of the energy gets released in the form of heat from the neutrons. The neutrons are releasing energy in the form of heat. So instead. We want an a-neutronic thermonuclear bomb because an a-neutronic thermonuclear bomb says, no, we're not going to release the energy in the form of heat. We're going to release the, release the energy in the form of electricity, pure electricity. In fact, it's about three times more efficient. I mean, depends exactly how much more efficient, but comparing just standard like uh uh, neutronic fusion to a neutronic fusion is generally about three times more efficient. So significantly more efficient. 
Now, if we have this huge amount of energy in this region of space time, what we do to our waves, imagine that we are in this calm ocean, very calm ocean, but it's got a little bit of waves in it. And we take this huge amount of energy. It causes the waves to go like this. All of a sudden, the waves are getting huge. They get squeezed together. And when you squeeze your waves, all of a sudden, their amplitude goes way up and way down. This is how we increase the amount of negative energy that we need. The negative energy isn't this exotic substance. It's us disturbing the medium. It's us disturbing the medium. And when we disturb the medium, we squeeze it together and we increase this amplitude of these zero point fluctuations. That's the negative energy that we're looking for. So we get the negative energy by using positive energy in our space time to squeeze our space time. Booyah. Okay. Okay, Lou, you're going to be good. Next thing here Vindicated again. Always write about everything. Here we go. Looks like we got another one, chat. So we have just been on a roll recently. We had macroscopic quantum in, uh, tunneling, just won the Nobel Prize. Right again, right again. And now, here you go. I'm just going to read this. Just observe. Just observed. Here we go. Scientists create matter from pure light proving Einstein's 120-year-old theory, E equals MC squared, right in the lab. For the first time, researchers used ultra-powerful lasers. Ultra-powerful lasers, chat. Add a second lasers. Use ultra-powerful lasers to smash photon particles of light together, triggering a reaction that produced actual particles of matter and antimatter electrons and positrons this is right up our alley this is pretty much what we've been talking about for two years straight right here this is known as the brett wheeler we this is definitely a john archibald wheeler by the way the the brett or brett wheeler process a phenomenon first predicted back in 1934 but never observed in the lab until now now, why is this so huge, chat? Yes, Yahtzee's in the chat, everybody. Why? Because this shows the equivalence principle is correct. Energy is matter. Energy is mass. And so instead, it, we know that mass can manipulate space-time. But now this proves that pure energy can also manipulate space-time because matter it, E equals mc squared. Energy equals matter times the speed of light squared. So this means we can actually use condensed energy to manipulate space-time. That's one angle to it. That's what this says in this post that I made. So go ahead and like this post, share this post if you like it. But also, it also shows that we can produce matter from light. We can make atoms. We can actually just make atoms from pure energy. 